What's up guys, so in this new tutorial series what we're going to be working on is how to make the game Pong. It's a pretty simple game, as you can see I added a background just to kind of make it look a little bit less basic than normal. But what it's going to consist of is just two paddles, it's not going to be playing against a bot, they'll just both be user controlled using different keys. And yeah, in this game we're just going to keep track of each score. There's a bug right there, don't worry, in the final version of the game. We will definitely have that taken care of. I just This is just like an old program that I made a while back just to kind of demonstrate what we're going to be making in this tutorial. So I hope you guys enjoy. And yeah, let's get started. So to start things off, what we're going to be doing is just importing Pygame. If you don't have that already installed onto your computer, just look up a video online. I'm sure you'll find dozens of them that'll explain what to do. Depending on if you're a Mac user, Windows user, all that, there's good resources for all that already available. Um, once you import Pygame, what you're going to do is just say pygame.init, and that's basically going to just bring in all of the assets that we're going to need in order to code this up. Next, what we're going to do is, I've already copied it, but we're going to paste in a background image, the one that you just saw. Um, and down in the description, there's going to be a GitHub link to where you can just open that up and download this image and then just paste it, paste it into your directory. If you're not using PyCharm, that's no big deal. Just make sure you drop this file in the same folder as your project so that you can access it. And so once we paste that in there, what we're going to do is just create a variable called background. We're going to say bg is going to equal pygame.display. Actually, no, I'm sorry, pygame.image. And then we are going to pass in the name of it. So bg2.png. And once we get that created, we have to also make a window. So we're going to say win equals pygame.display dot set mode and we are going to pass in a size so instead of just hard coding it in there I'm gonna actually just go up a couple lines create two variables let's say the screen width is gonna be set equal to like I think 800 should be fine and the height we'll make it like 600 so it'll be a, it'll be a bit rectangular and then so we'll pass those in here we need another pair of parentheses we'll say screen width comma screen height so that's just how the width of the screen and then the height of the screen. And also just up here for the declaration of the background, we also just want to say pygame.image.load. That is my bad. And so that should all be taken care of now. What we're going to do next is we're going to add a title to the game. So we're going to say pygame.display.set underscore caption. So caption is actually going to be what the title is going to say at the top of the window. And we will just call it Pong. Make it P capital. So that's all looking good. So now I believe when we run this, nothing happens because it's still a little bit too early. We also need to create a clock. And so this clock is going to, in a sense, keep track of the game, right? So it's what's going to provide us with the frames per second and just kind of make it to where anybody that runs this code on any device, like any different computer, it'll run at the same speed. So like better computers won't necessarily run better. It'll just kind of balance things out. And so after we create the clock, we're going to create our main while loop. And this is where all of the code that is main is essentially going to go. So we're going to create a variable called run. And then we're going to say while run. Drop a colon there. Clock dot tick. We'll pass in 100. So what we just did is we have a variable called run. And this one is going like so when the game starts the game is going to be running right off the bat and it'll stay running until the game ends then run will go false and the game will end we added clock.tick and we passed in a hundred and what the hundred here represents is how many frames per second we want so the game the game is going to be running at a hundred frames per second which is what we declared and like i said earlier this will keep it consistent with every single computer what we also need to do is have a condition that checks to see if the user quits the application. So we're going to create a for loop. We're going to say for events in pygame dot events dot get. And what this is going to do is it's going to be waiting to see if the user has escaped the game. So if they have clicked the top left X or top right if you're on Windows, then the code will stop running. So we're going to say if events dot type is equal to pygame.quit, which is when the user clicks the X, then run will equal false. And so now we just have to add a line under the while loop. We're gonna make sure we 
take out all of the indentation so that it runs after and we're just going to say pygame.quit and so that's only going to run whenever the user has exited the while loop causing the cam to stop running so now that we've got that running this will um, keep the game going until the user clicks out so now when we press play or run we are introduced to this beautiful looking screen that looks all glitchy but don't worry we just haven't displayed the actual picture that we imported yet so what we're going to do next is we're going to go up here right before the while loop we're going to create a function called redraw game window and what this is going to do is we are going to run this function every time the while loop executes so redraw game window and we are going to pass in a parameter called win and so what we're going to do in here is we are going to say win dot well, actually we don't need the parameter I mean, we, we, it's, we're going to use the same one there's no sense in passing it in there so what we're going to do right off the bat is we are going to say win dot blitz and we're going to pass in the background that we declared up here and we are going to give it a tuple of points so an x and a y of where we want that image to be displayed so we want it to start off in the top left corner which is going to be zero zero so now our image will be displayed at the top left corner of the window what we're also going to do is at the very bottom of this function we have to have a line that says pygame.display.update what this line is going to do is it's going to refresh the screen and implement all of the changes that have happened since the last time it was called. So it'll keep it updating every single frame that we set it to earlier. So now I believe when we run this, we should get, actually, I'm sorry, that is my bad. We just have to call redraw game window inside the while loop because right now it's not being used. So we can just call that. I think at the very end of the while loop should be fine. So after this for loop, but we don't want it to be inside the for loop, just on the same level as it. We are going to say redraw game window. And now it's going to get called every time the while loop executes. So when we run this, we will see our background. And so now that is looking fantastic. We are no longer having to stare at that glitchy screen. So now that we've got that set up, so this is mainly like, this is all of the basic kind of boilerplate code that we need just to kind of implement everything else. So I think what we're gonna start off with first is just the player. So we can go above the redraw game window and we are going to create a class called player. So class player, we'll pass an object just to kind of have that there, right? And the first thing we're gonna make is the init function. So we're going to say def underscore underscore init and we don't really need any parameters besides self. Well since we're going to have this to where both of the paddles are going to be used for this I guess we can have the parameters just to kind of distinguish where they are. So we'll give it like an x and a y. The width and the height will be consistent so we don't have to pass that in. The color will also be the same. So I think just the x and the y should be more than enough. And what we're going to do here is we're going to say self.x is going to equal x, self.y will be set equal to y. And now we have to figure out what we want the width and the height to be. So let's say self.width will make it 20 for now. We can always change that later. And then the height, so the whole height of the screen is 600, so maybe like 70 should be good. So self.h is going to equal 70. I think those numbers should be fine. We can always change them later on. And let's also give it a color. So we can say self.color. We'll set that equal to, let's just make it white for now. So we'll say like 255, 255, 255. So it'll be clearly visible. And once we get that taken care of, we need to create the draw function to actually display that on the screen, right? So we're going to say def draw. We have self, and here we'll pass in window, and we are going to say pygame.draw.rect. And the first thing we have to pass in is the window parameter, so win, comma, then we'll pass in self.color, which in this case is white, 
And now we have to create, uh, add a list of four values. So the first one's going to be the x, so self.x. Second one's the y. The third one is the width, and the fourth is the height. So self.w, self.h. So this is going to be telling the compiler where the rectangle is going to be displayed. And it's going to give it the proper size and location for the game. Next, what we're going to do is, so we've got the player taken care of. Let's go down here above the while loop. Let's add a couple of empty spaces. And let's create a player just to kind of visualize it on the screen. So we can just go in here. We can say like player one is going to equal player. Is that what you called it? Oh, let's capitalize the P in the class name. It's just a good habit. So we'll create a new player and we just have to pass in an X and a Y. So let's say, let's give him an X of like 10 and a Y of, let's put him in the middle of the screen. So we'll say like screen height, which is going to be 600 divided by two. So that'll give us 300, but we want the middle of the player to be in the middle of the screen. So we have to just subtract. Hmm, we can subtract. So we made that we made the width or the height 70. So we can just subtract 35 and that'll be perfectly centered uh, vertically. And then now that we've created the player, we just have to draw them, draw that player inside the redraw game window. So we will just say player one dot draw and then pass in the window. So now let's run this and we should see the player. Yep. So there he is just chilling on the left side, not looking too bad. So I think we should just make him a little bit taller because I feel like 70 pixels might not be enough. So we can definitely just go up here and we'll change that. And we will say instead of 70, we can make it, let's just make it 100. I think 100 should be more than enough. And then down here when we subtract to 35, let's just subtract 50 to make it stay centered. And so yeah, that looks a little bit better. Like, like I said, we can always change that later on if we want to just make it look a little bit different, but that should be good for now. So now we can also just copy this line and paste it to create the second player, which is going to be on the right side. And so as far as the Y position, we can keep that the same, but for the X, well, the whole, so we just need to do the screen width minus then the whole, the width of the player is 20. And here we made it 10 off the left side, so we should make it 10 off the right side. So 20 plus 10 is 30. So we will do screen width minus 30. And then also just go up here say player two dot draw and pass in the window. So now when we run this, we get two amazing paddles on the screen, one on each side. So now that we've got the paddles, we have to figure out how we're gonna move them. So I think the best method is just gonna be using the arrow keys for the right player, which is player two, and then the W and S keys for the left player, which is player one. In order to implement that, what we're gonna have to do is create a list that's going to keep track of all the keys that have been pressed. So we're going to say keys is going to equal pygame.key.get underscore pressed. And once we get that, we are going to have an if statement checking to see which key has been pressed. So let's, we're going to essentially need four right now. So the first one we'll start off with is like the up arrow key. We'll say if keys square bracket, high game, and all lowercase, dot k underscore up, and uppercase. So if the up arrow key was pressed, then what we're going to do is we will say p2, or player2, I'm sorry, dot y is going to minus equals, let's say, 10 pixels. So now, What's going to happen whenever we press the up arrow key is that the Y position of the player is going to decrease by 10. And since the top is zero, we need to subtract instead of add, even though we're going up. So it kind of seems a little counterintuitive, but that's just kind of how the points on the screen work. So like, let's say where the, where my cursor is right here is like 400. If I go 390, I moved up 10 pixels. If I go, if I add 10 and I go to 410, then I'm moving down 10 pixels. So it's a little bit backwards than like what we would assume, but that's just kind of how it is. So now, if I press the up arrow key, he goes up. So that's looking good. 
what we can do next is, well, I think before continuing this, I want to have just a, instead of typing in 10 every single time, I think it would be better to have a set velocity for the players. So we can just go up to the very top. Let's just go right before we click, um, created the clock. We'll say like VEL for velocity. We'll just say that's gonna equal 10. And then we can always just change that variable if we think it's too fast or too slow later on. And what we're gonna do is take off this 10. We'll say VEL. And then if you, if you notice in the last time we just ran this, when I held down the up arrow, the player like rose above the screen and he was off the screen. So to prevent that from happening, we just need another if statement to where we check to see if player to dot y minus the velocity, if that's less than zero, we don't want the player to move up. So if, if that's the case, we want to actually just set the player to um, a y of zero. So we'll say player two dot y is gonna equal zero to just make him freeze at the top, right? And then else, then he'll, um, he will go up. So let's just check to make sure all this works before continuing on. So now when I hold down the up arrow, we get to the top and then it, it doesn't go anymore. It just stays at y equals zero, which is exactly what we wanted. So now instead of retyping everything, let's just copy this line and paste it down below. And so this is for the up arrow. Now let's do one for um, the W key, which is essentially like the up arrow for player one. So we will say, I actually also need this if statement at the very top, that is my bad. And let's just fix the indentation. So now we need, to, instead of saying K underscore up, we're gonna say K underscore W and change the player twos to just player ones. So that's all it takes to create that. Let's just run this. So we've got an error going on. Let me find why. Oh, it's because W's, so like the letters actually have to be lowercase. That's my bad. So K underscore lowercase W. So now if I hold down the up arrow, that's still working. If I hold down my W key, the same thing happens, which is fantastic. The next thing we have to do is just have the down arrow key logic coded up. So we can actually copy all this. Let's copy the one above it and paste that down below. And now instead of saying K underscore up, we're gonna say K underscore down, and we're gonna change this if statement. So let's delete that. And in this case, we're going to check to see if holding down that air, down arrow key is gonna make it to where the bottom surpasses the height of the screen, which is what we don't want. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna say player two dot y, yeah, player two dot y, plus player two dot height, um, plus velocity. So if the, the y of the player plus the height of the player plus the velocity that we're trying to change it by is greater than the screen height, then we want to make it to where the player to dot y is going to be set equal to the screen height minus player to dot height. And we can just get rid of the player to y equals zero. So what we just did here is we checked to see, so let's say the y of the player is 500 for example. The whole, the screen height as we coded up here was 600 and then the height of the player is 100. So like 500 plus 100 is 600 which is also the screen height. So if we try adding 10 to that which is the velocity then we surpass the screen height, which we don't want to do because we want to stay on the screen. So instead of allowing it to happen, we are going to hard code the Y of the player to be the screen height minus the height of the player. So it'll just be just touching the very bottom. And then if that's not the case, well then we can just player two dot Y plus equals velocity. So that's all looking good. Let's copy this if statement, paste it down below, and we're gonna do it for K underscore S, which is the down arrow key for player one. And then just like before, we're gonna change all the twos to ones. And then we can test it out. So let's run this and see what happens. 
So now when I press the up arrow and the W key, it goes up. If I press the down arrow, it goes down and stops at the bottom. So that's all looking good. They have their own independent movement. I can just move one. I can move, it's all I mean, working perfectly. It stops where it needs to stop and it's all looking good. So that's, I think this is gonna be a good stopping point for this video. In the next video, we're gonna go over how to add the ball and give it kind of a randomized velocity. So I hope you guys enjoyed. The next video will be coming out very, very soon. Like if you found this useful, comment down below if you have any questions regarding the content and subscribe to stay updated. Peace.